You know, I'll be honest, this is getting kind of sad. So I don't know if you guys remember, but in my previous video, we had talked about how Ready or Not lost its community manager, and I had asked the question of who is actually going to continue these newsletters. Well, the answer is nobody, because about a week later when they were supposed to come out, they never came out. Yeah, so now the community has taken it upon themselves to try and come out with newsletters, even though they're not supposed to actually have access to the stuff that they're actually showing off here. So these people are cracking into the game or they prefer the term data mining to see what's underneath the hood this is one of the reasons why i was really hesitant to even make this video because i have no idea where this actually stands when it comes to the nda because the stuff that they're showing off here is not featured in the supporter edition again this was stuff that was data mined and could quite possibly put my channel in jeopardy for even talking about this but i do find it sad that in order for us to actually see something new we actually have to crack the game to even see what's going on Imagine paying $120 and then sitting there for months to get an update for the PvE update And then these people come along and just crack the game and then all of a sudden they have all this information Imagine that I haven't actually read this update just yet But from what I understand it's not actually a PvE update it's a PvP update But yeah like I thought that it was cool when FAQ was actually like doing the newsletters Granted these weren't playable updates but they were updates nonetheless But for the most part he would talk about one map and that one map for a very long time I think it was meth that that he used to talk a lot about but that was like the only map that he was permitted to really talk about it seems for a while but with these data mines they definitely show off new stuff but i'm still not entirely sure if this is actually nda free or even if this stuff is actually going to make it into the final product because i have a feeling that a lot of this stuff is going to be subject to change i have gotten no word from the developers on whether or not this is actually good to cover but the people that data mine this stuff have been posting this everywhere whether that be on the reddit discord or wherever else they decided to post it so for from what I gather, it seems like the developers don't really care. But then again, it's only been a day. So if the developers ask me to take down the video or try to hit me with the DMCA, I'm gonna pull this thing down so fast. So I guess get it while it's hot. I mean, it really doesn't instill confidence when I know for a fact that one of the people, scratch that, two of the people, maybe more, that has their names on this newsletter is actually banned from one of their discords. So I mean, red flag, well fuck it, right? So I was initially going off of the date on the coupon, which if you don't know what the coupon is, it's basically a coupon that was given to the standard edition buyers so that they can buy into the supporter edition at a much more reasonable price than what we got this happened because they completely missed the beta date but yeah because the coupon expires on the 31st of october but i have a feeling that this is going to go into 2021 which pretty much lines up with void in general because they had an announcement a while back of the dates of when the trailer and the game was supposed to release but then they delayed that an entire year they never actually told us when it was supposed to come out it just kind of came out so once again we're being left in the dark as usual so basically what i'm trying to say is don't expect anything soon all right so now that i went through my little rant let's get into the bootleg newsletter what the hell is that date great start so far the background picture is an interesting portrayal of what they're trying to do here i suppose it starts off with saying gather around fellow squad mates oh we're playing squad now hold up once upon a time voice community manager faq wrote a bi-weekly newsletter detailing the ongoing development of ready or not which included information Information, various screenshots and occasionally animated gifs. This was very exciting for our community since it gave us a glimpse into what Void was currently working on. Uh, I kind of disagree but okay. Assuring us that the game was moving forward in production. However, after four years of hard work and dedication, FAQ resigned to pursue his dream of being an author. As much as we miss FAQ, this also meant that the newsletter would cease to be. Because of this, we have taken it upon ourselves to provide a newsletter of our very own. Through data mining. Uh huh. Yeah. We've been able to acquire further insight to the game's development and eager to share it with you guys. Don't worry, Void is well aware that we've been able to do this. It's interesting that they say this because I haven't seen too many developers actually talk about this or really acknowledge this publicly. Like, they kind of just acted like nothing was going on. But who knows, I wasn't in those conversations. Like, I mean, if they were okay with this, then why didn't they put it in announcements or tweet it out? I'm just saying, it feels kind of odd, you know? And has kindly asked us to refrain from sharing PvE co-op content. Go figure. We fully intend to respond the development team's wishes interesting how you say that now therefore the content within this and all if any future newsletters are not under nda that can be shared publicly furthermore everything presented is a work in progress and subject to change yeah i figured as much they are in no way representative of the final product all right let's get going again if the developers were okay with it then how come they didn't just drop it in announcements and ping everybody or tweet it out right oh well so the first thing that they talk about is door destruction which we've already seen in one of the previous 
GIFs that they've shown on their Twitter, the Vador actually exploding into pieces when you put it on the C2. It says here, here are a few examples when using the battering ram. The way it breaks a door depends on where it's directed, allowing players to choose between knocking them open or punching a hole, which can be used as openings to shoot through. Breach doors will also stay permanently unlocked. Suspects on the other side won't be happy when you come knocking. I think the first thing that I gotta say about this picture is this has gotta be the most flimsiest door I have ever seen. If you could just hit it once and break a hole the moment that you hit it. And from the looks of this picture, it looks like he was hitting it consecutively, going up and down the door, destroying bits and pieces of it. Like, it's kind of ridiculous, right? Unrealistic if you ask me. Like, I imagine if you actually use a battering ram in the middle of the door, then it is possible to make a hole in it. But if you actually do make a hole, then the door should basically stay firmly locked until you actually hit it where the lock meets the wall, right? Like, I feel like it shouldn't be that easy to break holes into the door, if I'm being honest. Like, if it's that easy to do it with a battering ram, then I should just be able to kick a hole through it with my boot. But I don't know, maybe the training map's doors are really this flimsy. Then again, everything is subject to change, so we'll see. But anyways, this next one kind of confuses me. So it's a picture of the P250, otherwise known as the Sig Saucer P250, or P250, however you say that. The thing that kind of confuses me is that it says here that it was a model replacement created by Lewd SCP uh, 1471A, mouthful of a name, for the Glock 19, a good looking model for a good looking gun. So I I'm a bit confused here. Is this actually not a part of the game? Are you telling me that you modded this in? Like, they really should have been more clear here. Like, is this actually content that is coming from Ready or Not, or did you mod this in? Because if you modded this in, then I don't think that this should be featured in a newsletter for a game that's still being developed here. I mean, I knew from the beginning that you were going to be able to mod into the game, but I don't think that modding should be the forefront of a newsletter. Like, you want to know what's new, and maybe this is, but saying that it's a model replacement created by this person kind of throws me off a bit, because I know this person is not a part of the developer team. Again, this is a community-made newsletter. Just giving some criticism, this needs to be made more clear about what this is, and I don't think that mods should be featured in newsletters just yet, if this is a mod. I don't know, it's not really clear. Like, for all I know, this could just be a skin that's in the game files, and they just put it on top of the Glock. I don't know, it's not too clear. But yeah, that's all I really got to say about this. Let's move on to the next thing here. I think it's the same thing with this one. This is the USP. It says here, this one you've seen many times before, the HK USP, a model replacement of the M2011 mod, also created by Lewd, SCP, yada yada yada. Pistol loved by operators and loathed by hostiles. So I'm just assuming that they took the skin that was in the game and replaced the M2011 with the USP. But see, the mod kind of throws me off, along with created by this person that's not affiliated with Void Interactive. Like, these descriptions need to really be more detailed. Like, say, we or SCP was able to find a skin in the game, and we or SCP replaced the M2011 with the USP skin. So it functionally acts like the M2011, but for your viewing pleasure, we made it look like the USP, just to show what new weapons are coming to the game. And then you could add in the a pistol loved by operators and loved by hostiles and all that yada yada yada, just to make the newsletter longer than it actually is, because this is kind of a short newsletter to be honest. I will say that these two guns do look pretty good though, definitely not bad looking weapons, but uh, yeah, let's push on to the next thing. So this one also has a gift too, so I'll be showing that off while I read this. The next thing that we have is the P90. The FMP90 is an SMG with a high rate of fire and a 50 round mag? Really? It seems like a lot to me. I don't know, I've never shot one. You may have spotted this before in the original gameplay trailer, filling a trailer and suspect with holes. A gun like this will definitely come in handy for fast paced situations, which requires speed and tactics. Not a bad description, but I think they really should have mentioned that this is probably better for close quarters combat than actually, you know, being so far away. All right, moving on to the next thing here. We also got the M24. The M24 is a sniper rifle, never would have guessed, that will be used by the sniper unit in PvE portion of the game. It may also be used in the PvP portion of the game though, that is yet to be confirmed. This high power rifle can be the turning point during intense situations, such as neutralizing a suspect or preventing the murder of a civilian. Yeah, I actually complained about this a while ago. I used to see people that would actually talk about the M24 and I was just like, why would you take this long range weapon into close quarters fighting? That makes no sense. That's why I'm surprised that they even included it here, to be honest. But I mean, there is an animation for the bolt action, so I mean, it's possible that it's most likely going to get into the multiplayer. But uh, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much the entire community newsletter. It's relatively short. And honestly, I thought they were going to be showing off more than that, but I guess not. But, I mean, I guess it's kind of 
of cool that they're doing this, but at the same time, I kind of hope it doesn't turn out like um, the Ready or Not podcast, where it just kind of like fizzled out after like the next couple of weeks, because we ran out of content to talk about. Like these guys could run into the same dilemma, not knowing what to talk about when they run out of data mined content and the devs haven't freaking updated the build. But who knows? We'll see. So that does it for that. A uh, little bit of news at the timing of this recording. There was a tweet that was dropped by NVIDIA. It was basically showing off a bunch of games that are going to be featuring ray tracing with the new RTX 3080, which I'm still kind of pissed off about because I bought one of the 20 series. It's like, God damn it, I could have saved money. But anyways, we already knew that Ready or Not was going to be getting ray tracing, like it's been said before. But now I guess it's official because it's actually on RTX's Twitter here. But it seems like it's official now. It says here, DLSS will be available when the game launches in early access later in 2020. When is later exactly? I don't know. Is it actually going to be after the 31st? I mean, maybe. I don't know if I necessarily believe that, but I guess we'll wait and see. Is early access really just a few weeks away? Who knows? But this RTX post seems to confirm it, at least for now. I guess we'll wait and see. But yeah, that's where I'm gonna end it. If you enjoy the fact that I cover games like Ready or Not, then be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below. Below. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. You never know, you might find something that you like on the channel. Stick around. Pop a squat next to Uncle Dooray. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, be sure to check out my Patreon. Just send two bucks a month. It really does help. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.